Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Nick and in today's video we're going to be diving into something a little bit different and I'm super excited. I recently got my hands on a Creality Falcon 2 Pro laser cutter and I couldn't wait to see if I can bring my AI driven 3D printing workflow into the world of laser cutting. But I wanted to take it one step further. What if we could etch some custom designs onto clothing? In today's video I'm going to show you exactly how I turned that idea into a reality. From using AI to create unique designs to fine tuning settings in Lightburn, you'll see the whole process and maybe even be inspired to breathe new life into some old jeans or clothes. So grab a cold one and let's jump right in. To kick off the design process, I knew I wanted to create some unique and adorable animals. Let's start by talking about the platform we'll be using. I've experimented with several other image generation tools, but I keep coming back to Midjourney. While many platforms can produce impressive results, I find that Midjourney consistently delivers the aesthetic and quality that I'm looking for. If you're new to AI image generation or even Midjourney, you'll feel right at home with Midjourney's new web interface. I highly recommend checking out my Midjourney tutorial. It covers everything from the prompt creation to exploring the platform's features in depth. And it has valuable resources for getting the most out of your AI creations. Midjourney is not free, but definitely affordable and an amazing tool to help you create designs for new projects every single day. If you plan to use your laser cutter for new creations to sell, then it is a must have tool. It will save you hours of looking for a specific design. Once you learn how to use Midjourney, it will become an important tool in your business. To get started, I first came up with a theme for my project. My daughter just loves animals and she's on this unicorn and horse trip right now. So that was where I started. If you don't happen to have an idea for your project, Midjourney has an explore feature that will definitely give you some great ideas. You can either browse through the explore page or use the search feature. If you type in clip art up here in the search bar, it will give you a ton of image generations that use the word clip art in the prompt. Once you find something that you like, you can click on that image and it will give you the exact prompt that was used to generate that image. You can also start by collecting images by clicking on the heart icon right here. Once you have some inspiration, it's time to move on to generating your first images. I wrote out a simple prompt to generate my first batch of ideas and here's that prompt. Clip art of a beautiful unicorn, leave white space around the entire object, black objects and white background, thick bold lines, SVG style. This prompt gave me some fantastic results that were perfect for what I had in mind. Now while the AI generated unicorns that look great, they came out in color, but I needed a clean black and white version. There are countless ways to convert images to black and white, but one of the easiest methods is using resizepixel.com. Once you open the site, just hit upload image and select the image you need to convert. Next, make sure the black and white only on the left hand menu is selected and click convert. You will instantly see your image change to black and white. Now at the bottom right corner, click the go to download button. Then click the download image button to save it back to your computer. It's quick and gives you a black and white image and all the color removed. With my black and white unicorn ready, the next step was to use that as a style reference. This approach ensures that all future animal designs maintain the same cute and cohesive look. I'll walk you through how to use that as a style reference in Midjourney to create more animals and keep everything consistent in your design set. Let's go ahead and go back to Midjourney now. With our converted black and white image, let's go ahead and upload it. Click on the icon right here and upload it to Midjourney. Now that it's uploaded, we can use that as a style reference. This will tell Midjourney that you want to create images that are similar to that style. To do this, just click on the uploaded image and it will jump into the prompt bar. Next, hover over and select the paperclip icon. This is telling Midjourney that you want to use it as a style reference. Great, now all we need to do is simplify our prompt a little and generate a ton of new animals that follow this style. For this, I use the following prompt. A simple vector clip art of a cute fox isolated on a white background. There are countless ways to tweak your prompts, but a simple approach worked perfect for me, so I'm sticking with it. To customize your images, just swap out the adjective cute or change the animal type. You can also add context with the action verb to make your designs more dynamic. Try something like a cute goat jumping or a cute pig playing in the mud. If you want to generate images quickly, here's a pro tip. Press the up arrow key on the keyboard to autofill your last prompt complete with your style reference. Then just swap out the animal description and hit enter. It's that easy. Here are some of the results I achieved using this method. Just check out how consistent and adorable they look. Next up will be our laser setup method. But before getting into the laser cutting process, I thought I'd walk through a little bit of the machine that I'll be using. In the video introduction, I mentioned that I'll be using a Creality Falcon 2 Pro. So I thought I would take a minute to go over some of the features that I like about this machine. First off, the laser cutter has a fully enclosed design, which means it keeps all the smoke and dust and noise inside. This helps make your workspace cleaner and quieter. 
even though the machine is still quite loud. The metal frame is strong and gives a solid industrial look. It also has two side fans that turn on automatically while it's working, and then go into sleep mode when it's done, saving energy and keeping things simple. Another awesome feature is the built-in camera. This helps line up your designs just right so you don't have to guess about placement. The Falcon 2 Pro also has a special heat vent that adjusts to fit different material sizes and a drawer at the bottom that catches all the little pieces and dust, making it easy to clean up after every project. These features help make your projects easier, cleaner, and more fun to create. If you're in the market for a laser cutter, I would recommend taking a look at the Falcon 2 Pro, and I'll include a link in the description below. All right, let's go ahead and move on. If you haven't already, I would download your first image that you would like to test. You're also going to need an old pair of jeans to do some testing on. If you don't have any, I would recommend hitting a thrift store and you can get a pair of jeans for less than five bucks. I will assume you have already completed a few projects with your laser cutter. If not, I'm sure there's a few other videos from other creators that will help you out with that. What we need to do first is run a few tests. Our goal for this test is to make sure that we're only removing the top die layer of the jeans. If we set our laser too powerful, it will start to cut into the fabric and you'll get holes in the jeans and we'll simply just pull apart. And yes, I'm speaking from experience. One of the most important things to remember is to give this laser the flattest surface that you can. For this, I cut two different pieces of one by wood that I'll use to give us a flat surface. I just slide them into the jeans and press my hands down and swipe them a few times to give them a nice flat surface. This allows the jeans to be flat and elevated so you don't have to worry about the laser catching the edge of your jeans by accident. This method also protects the other side of the jeans when you're setting up your power tests. I've always been able to get better results with this trick. Now one of the standout features of the Falcon 2 Pro is that it uses a camera for the material positioning. Once I have my jeans placed and flattened, I just go over to the camera control tab and hit the update overlay button. It will now show me a preview of my jeans laid out in the main area in Lightburn. Next, let's just set up a few test layers. To do this, I'm going to use the text tool. Click on the A button here and lay out some text. Next, click on the main viewing area of Lightburn and type in testing 5%. I like to use a thick font for this test, so let's change it to Arial Black. Next, switch to the Cuts Layers tab so that we can give our first test some settings. For this, I'm going to go with 100 speed for all of our tests, but change the power level. For this one, I'm going to set the power to 5%. Alright, let's repeat that process three more times using the power levels of 8, 10, and 12%. Your laser power level may be very different, so your test levels may be quite different from mine. I'll go ahead and space them out and align them to the left so that they're nice and straight. Next we need to add each test to its own layer so we can use different settings for each. Use the selection tool and select your 8% text. Next click on the 01 purple button right down here. That will place your text on its own layer. Now repeat that for the other tests that you have in your project and place them on their own layer. Let's change each layer from line mode to fill. Then change the power settings to match each test. Next I'm going to resize and align my test over my test area using the updated camera overlay image that I just took. Also I like to place down items that give me just a reference border where my flat board is on my jeans and it makes it easier to see where to place my text at. I had two pieces of wood sitting next to me so I'm going to use those for the top and bottom borders and place the text between those. All we have to do now is hit start and let the machine run the tests on our jeans. Alright now that the tests are complete let's go ahead and take a look at our results. As you can see, the 5% test was too low even to show up. As we look at all three tests, you can see that the 12% is giving us the cleanest out of all three. What I like to do next is give it a pull test. I pull on the jeans in both directions just to make sure that the jeans don't rip and fray. All three tests look like they passed. Our goal is just to remove the top die layer only to ensure that the integrity of the jeans are still intact. Now I could very well run a second test and bump them up another 2% all the way to 20, but I think the results we got at 12% are looking good. The text is clean and we're not getting any issues with the jeans coming apart. Now that our test is complete, let's go ahead and have some fun. I went ahead and downloaded 5 different animals and all we have to do is repeat what we learned from our test results. We will be using the power setting of 12% and the speed of 100. That should give us a nice clean finish for each of the animals. Again, the great part about having this built-in camera feature for the Falcon 2 Pro is I could literally lay out five of the images at once and let it rip. But for the sake of getting the best results, I'm going to laser one at a time. Alright, hold up. 
Once my daughter found out what this project was about, she insisted that I add a bee and a sheep to the list, bringing our total now to seven animals. I decided to work on four animals at a time to keep things manageable and ensure that I could focus on keeping the fabric flat. First, I slid a piece of my one by board inside the pant leg to create a sturdy flat surface for etching. Then I placed it onto the laser bed. Next, I updated the light burn camera overlay to get an accurate view of the jeans on the laser bed. From there, I imported each animal one by one, carefully positioning them to make sure that they printed exactly where I wanted. I started by importing the B design using the import button here. Since the images are bitmaps, I use Lightburn's trace feature to create a clean, scalable outline. To do this, just right click on the image, select trace image, and the settings window will pop up. These designs are pretty sharp, so the default settings work perfectly for me. Once you hit OK, you'll see an outline around your image, then just drag the original bitmap off the side and delete it. I resized the bee to fit neatly at the top near the pocket. Next, I imported the goat, chicken, and cow images, using the same process to trace, resize, and place each one on the jeans. I only had enough space for these four, so I decided to run the laser on them first to make sure that everything looked good before moving on to the other designs. Here are the final results. One thing I quickly realized was how important it was to have everything perfectly flat on the surface of the jeans to get a clean, even laser print. Any wrinkles or uneven areas could really impact the quality of the etching. I also learned that I may have gone a little bit overboard with the sizing of the animals, which made it tricky to position them on the jeans in a completely flat area. Smaller designs would have been easier to place and it might have resulted in a more uniform look. In the end though, I'm thrilled how these turned out. The etching designs have a unique custom look and they really stand out, and it opens up endless possibilities for decorating clothing and other materials. I hope that this project inspired you to try creating custom designs with your laser cutter, whether it's for personal use or even to get started selling unique pieces. Let me know in the comments if you try this technique or if you have any other ideas for laser etching projects. Thanks for watching. My name is Nick. Have a great day and happy lasering.